to another episode of From the Shadows. I would say if you're li- if you're liking the series, please drop it a like. I suppose I can say that still, even though it's only episode two. If you're enjoying the series, please do drop a like on the video. So, in our last episode, of course, uh, we just basically explained what was going on at the club. Uh, and now, of course, I've had, well, not a particularly long pre-season, and I've really been struggling to sort out a tactic. I, I, the plan was that I was going to just build one from scratch again, like I did with the Christmas tree of Doom. And... I feel like I set the bar too high for myself in a sense because that one just seemed to work really, really well. And I think trying to beat that is going to be incredibly difficult um, because it does seem to be an incredibly good tactic. And at one point, I was even tempted to try and use that tactic. But I wanted to try and come up with something at least slightly different for this save. And given the fact that we lack in one particular area of the pitch, and that is a wide midfielder. It's not attacking midfielders. We've got loads of them, but wide normal midfielders would have made playing the Christmas tree a little bit problematic. And um, We have brought in some players, though, and I'm going to show you that stuff first because that's always important. So... We've only brought in three. Um, these are all came from those trial day things that you can get. And we're obviously going to take a look and see if we can find some more that are available on non-contract. But it's going to be difficult. But it really, really is. Um, so firstly, we've got Hakim Jabali. Now, the main reason for this is because we really were lacking options up front. And he's not going to be a starter. He's going to be our backup player uh, to Sokhier. But... He looks like he's got a bit about him. He's more of a poacher type of player. And obviously for advanced forward, he does have a little bit of a problem with, you know, heading and some of the additional stats that you need. And obviously match fitness is an issue, but that's just because we're semi-professional. Um, you're just never going to get that up that much. And unfortunately, there are some professional clubs in this league, and that's going to cause us some issues, I feel. Uh, next up, We've got Frank Bokoya, uh, Bokoya uh, a Cameroonian, and he can play so many damn positions. That's the main reason I was interested in him. Uh, firstly, he looks fairly decent as well. Um, also, I don't know why this is just... Re- I've just noticed that I must have cleared the cache or something. Because this has reset itself. That's weird. I could have sworn I just... Really strange. Anyway, that is weird. Sorry, guys, I was just having a drink there. That's really strange. Um... I had these set up and then I've literally just... That's so strange. Anyway, moving on. Um, yeah, so he's 20 years old. He looks fairly decent. Um, like, currently at the moment, he's not fantastic, but he's mainly there for backup. Um, but the point is he's got decent potential and that's the main reason I'm interested in the lad is he's got that little bit extra to give us, I hope. Um, I really, really hope. Now, uh, coming up, we've got... Uh, where's the other one we got? Ah, oh, here we go. Christ. I say Christ. It could be Christ. Um, I don't know because he's French, so it could be Christ... Uh, Ntangu and again a bit better like he's already two and a half stars again 21 years old looks like he has decent potential although it's hard to tell because my scout really doesn't have the best stats and I haven't been able to replace him just yet I've been concentrating on the uh, the tactical side of things but there you go so he's got himself well he can play all the way up the left hand side just as the other can play up the other side so it's that's kind of what I'm looking for and you'll understand why in a minute when I show you the tactics I'm going to walk you through what's been going on uh, with us tactically because it's been a bit of a weird one so firstly I started off trying to build one from scratch, and this was what I came up with, basically. I basically just looked at the players we had and looked at the strengths of that team, basically, and where we had strengths. So we had a lot of defensive midfielders, or some good ones. Uh, We also had a lot of attacking midfielders that were solid, but wide attacking midfielders. The issue was, this just, I could not get it to work. Like, obviously, I played in a couple of friendlies and we won the games, but they were against such poor teams, and it just didn't feel like it was gelling that much. And I know that, obviously, you have to wait for the familiarity to go up, but I just didn't feel that against better teams, we'd be able to control the game in the way we were against those poor sides. So that's kind of the issue. Next up, I put the Christmas tree tactic of Doom that I've been using in my other save, essentially. Um in but then i've moved some stuff around basically so the reason i did it was because i wanted to try and keep the role the roles ideally because it worked and then essentially and keep the corner tactics and stuff like that that come attached to them because i didn't want to have to pull that stuff in again so what i did basically because we didn't have any decent wide midfielders i pushed cater and actual chergui who i must say is called idris what a fantastic name he's like idris elba we should just call him luther um yeah push them further up because they're not good as look they just don't have the... I mean, he's not particularly... Oh, no, he's more of a centre player. Sorry, it's we'll switch those two up. But my point is that he, as a player over here, isn't fantastic either. So, you know, it's much better to have them pushed up the pitch in positions like this. Actually, that's how I would have had it. Um, in fact, that's almost exactly how I would have had it, although probably switch those two over. Um, but I found that when I tried this, it gave us... <sighs> Well, as you can see, the changes are relatively small, so Shadow Striker still remains. The attacking playmaker is still there, but he's now dropped back into a slightly deeper role. Um, so it is all still matched up quite nicely, but I just found that in the friendlies I tried it in, we 
weren't as defensively solid. And I think the reason for that mainly is because there's a, a much larger gap now between the wide midfielders and our fullbacks. And it just meant that we were getting caught out there all the time. And yeah, I wasn't up for that. So I then sort of voiced my frustrations onto Twitter because that's what you do in these situations. And um, well, some of you guys will know Funkstar Gamer from the comments came up with a little suggestion. And this is what he said. And I must say, I was a little bit sceptical about it because I've never seen this sort of thing actually work. Um, the computers have played something similar against me before and I've always battered them, but that might just be because of the situations at the time. Um, and basically, again, Christmas Tree of Doom I used and then just moved the players around a little bit. Obviously, we couldn't use all the same roles. And it does remove any of the wide men. And I know you might be thinking, well, why would you do that? The reason being because we need to control those midfield areas and that's something that i think that we can maybe go for a bit more of a narrow approach essentially and this seems to make it work i'll do a quick pick now so you can actually see what i mean um so our two central midfielders could probably do with some reinforcements in that particular area but other than that i think it actually looks quite solid now obviously it's going to be exploitable down the flanks but one thing i noticed in the one friendly i've been able to use this in which is our re most recent five nil win is that when we got the ball into this sort of central area here to run towards the edge of the area you'd have so many players like at one point i saw seven players in the penalty area on an attack so you had these guys plus one of the fullbacks i think it was it was great to see for a start but it showed that we could get a lot of bodies forward and not look too vulnerable at the back because we still had th uh, four players back as a result of that with uh puyol sitting in the sort of center area now the other thing is it always left us with like at least one man over so we never had everybody marked up because nobody has as many players as us in that area so if it works it works and i just wonder that how it's going to work out today basically um i originally decided to go more of an attacking flexible route but in the end i ended up reverting back to what i feel works at this levels which is counter and structured it just feels better for me and i like playing these types of systems um with my teams so mm, let's see what else is there to really talk about um i do want to bring in some more players i do but it's going to be a little while yet before i can actually start doing that unfortunately we've still got plenty of time we've also signed a uh uh, like an affiliation agreement with Stad Ren, which is going to give us a little bit of... Um, hopefully, they've, they had the best youth facilities, which is the main reason I was interested, and the best youth recruitment. And I wanted to see if we could maybe get a couple of their youngsters on loan, depending on how good they are. That's the one problem. They might have loads of potential, but if they're no good now, they're not going to be much use to us. Um, so we'll have a look, but the affiliate report hasn't come through yet, which is a bit of a shame. So let's just... I think we should probably jump into the game today. And now, the first match of the season for us is against SAS Epinal, who are newly promoted from the amateur leagues in France, um, having been relegated. They've gone up and down a few times, to be fair to them. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. Now... As for the way the league works, as far as I can make out, it's just a standard four teams go down. And that's quite a lot out of a, an 18-team league for four teams to get relegated, I have to say. But I think that... Actually, let's just take a quick look at the rules just so we can uh, familiar us, familiarise ourselves with how it works. Um, so, league rules, promotion. Top three teams win promotion. Oh, so no playoffs or anything like that. Just interesting. Uh, okay. Okay. That's weird that those nations are counted in as Europe. That's a little bit weird. Anyway, right, so let's just... Oh, sorry about that, I was just mumbling to myself there. Right, let's get into this. Now, I'd like to start off with a win, I would. And since we're expected to try and win the damn league, we've also got to get to the ninth round of the cup. And I know that might sound like that's two rounds past the final, but it's actually not... I don't know exactly what round it is, but I think it's not even that close. Uh, I think there's 14 rounds, so... Hmm. Um, we want to start off with a win. Apparently, according to the season predictions, us and Red Star Paris are the two favoured clubs to win. And that puts a lot of pressure on us, of course, because I don't want to get sacked in this save immediately. That would kind of suck. But it also means that we're going to get some cracking derby games against Red Star Paris. Those games could be the title deciders. It really could be as simple as that. Um, as much as we're expected to win it, promotion is kind of really what matters. And so top three I would take, because um, I just worry about, you know, how well we're going to do in these first few games still working out tactics. Because the fact is, look at the competency levels. They're not, they're just not there yet. Um, and that's going to be causing us problems, I feel. But hopefully we can at least, against a slightly weaker team who are newly promoted, do the business. Now, they are the favourites for this game. Let me just make sure I've got that right. Yeah. Sorry, I was looked at the last friendly on, like, um, full, yeah, full. And, uh... It took a little while, but it was certainly much better to see. Uh, why is it saying that? Or is it because I was messing with the tactics when I was in the... Because I'm pretty certain I played this tactic in that friendly. Maybe it's because I changed it right at the end. I don't know. Um, 
at least we've got a, an assistant manager that has slightly better tactical knowledge this time as well, which is quite useful. I'm just hoping that we can... The fuck? Not what I meant to click. Um, just hoping. We've got decent morale. We're ready for the season ahead. We've got some quite quality players. Now, what I would say is that we've, despite being a, a semi-professional club that's got most players on non-contracts, we've got players like Richard Sokrier that is on four and a half or £4,200 a week. He needs to get off our wage bill and fast. Um, we've got two players that are on that kind of money and they're like 35. So the quicker we can get them off, the quicker we can start building. I'm really hoping... Sorry, I've got that much bigger than I usually would do from when I was doing preseason. Uh... That's about right. I don't really need to see anything else. I'd like to see us win this. I really would. Um, I would, I guess, take a draw, provided we looked good. You know, if we're looking shit, then I'll be worried. Uh, Kulipa, this is what I mean. Look at the amount of players we have over there. Go on, have a pop. Good effort, and it's over the bar. But we started well. Two shots, lots of possession. Pass completion is good. That's what I like to see. You know I love a bit of pass completion. Uh, right, three shots. Now, we do need to... The problem is, against these sort of teams, is they might be quite content to sit and when we're playing counter-attack and that could be difficult Cantini Socria he's gone out wide can he whip a ball in nobody really there but that doesn't mean we've not got plenty of players forward another thing I find is when the ball is knocked into these areas now when we knock it down we're winning all those second balls because we've got four players in that area Socria back to Puyo look at the space for these extra players there's so many guys there that we can just play these little intricate passes. Traore is now through oh what a save that was and the first clear cut chance of the game goes to us and again Puyo wins it recycles the possession to Traore. This is what I was enjoying a lot about that friendly, and I was kind of worried that it wouldn't translate into a competitive match because the quality of the opposition is obviously much higher. But it seems to have, for the first sort of half an hour of this game, we've been massively on top on possession and pass completion. Look at that, 90% pass completion and 70% possession. That's even better than the Christmas tree of doom. Um, so, yeah, I'll take that. We've limited them to... Well, I guess a couple of long shots, really. And, but this is my point. When we clear the ball, we've got plenty of players in the right areas to try and win those knockdowns. And then we can break in numbers. That's kind of the way this system's designed to work. Or it's sort of what I've morphed it into after um, some tests during that game. Admittedly, in that friendly, we started off a little bit poor. And then I changed a few things about the mentalities and some of the instructions. And it, it did seem to come together quite nicely. Look at this again. Edge of the area. Some space. Good long-range strike again. Socrier will bring this down. Back across the box, cleared away, and again brought down by our fullback this time. We'll have a pop. Oh, what a strike from Boalion, and it is 1 0 to Paris FC. That is the start we needed. But look, you cannot fault us for that first half an hour of this match. We've been utterly brilliant. And it's these kind of performances that are going to set us in good. Look at that 89% pass completion as a team. But what about this from the fullback? Of all the players in the team, I would not expect my fullback to be scoring a long ranger from the center of the pitch. But hey, we'll take it. We got a little bit of luck there. But we've been good enough to, to deserve it, I suppose, is the way I'm looking at it. Um, really, really solid performance. Happy with this. Now, it's never going to send us top of the league. Um, we're going to need some big wins for that because I think teams like Bastia are going to be pretty much... Uh, they're going to be one of our main rivals as well. You have to feel like they're going to be up there with us. Right, so 1-0. The issue we've got is off the bench, we're not exactly that strong just yet. We really do need to try and find some more players. And the great thing about this is we can register like an unlimited amount of players virtually so that means that we can bring in a load of players on non-contracts hopefully the ones that are going to be good and just have them as sort of backups so they don't get annoyed plus i've got decent discipline and hopefully that way we'll have plenty of uh, backups and supports in case things do go a little bit wrong for us somebody closing down great clearance and soccer is away here and there's players surging forward now look at the support please don't lose the ball here oh what are you doing you had a, such a great opportunity there we had so many players forward it was unreal Still looking good though. Second half, okay, we've done the possessions dropped a little bit, as has the pass completion, but I assume that's because we're tired and ah. Oh, last thing we needed now is an injury to someone like Traore. Um Bwalian can actually play in the midfield, which I'm guessing is why he's able to have that kind of shot. Although he's more of a defensive midfielder, so I'll switch those two over so he's a bit more comfortable. And we can bring on then ooh, I'm gonna bring on uh Sanaya just because he's slightly better in terms of match fitness. That's my only real reasoning behind that. I don't know whether we've got to a situation where we can actually do that just yet. Nah, uh, we don't, the players don't like me enough yet. I'm really hoping that we can bring through some youngsters in this save as well. That's one of my other plans. I really do want to boost the youth academy when the chances come, basically. I'm um, hoping the board might do it autonomously, but that's r not really that likely. Um, Shergui's looking absolutely knackered at the moment, and I think he may have taken a knock. Now, Kinkella isn't brilliant in that role, but he... Oh, wait. Hang on. Sorry, it looked like it was showing me another injury. I thought I was getting a little bit worried there. We're only a goal up, but we've they've not threatened us a huge amount in this second half. Uh, I might just make one more substitution here and get um, Jabali on here. If we can win this 1-0, so be it. You know, I, I feel like there's a lot of positives to be taken from it. Oh, please don't let them score now. Whew! 
Last chance of the game, and hopefully that's now that gone. Cleared away, and there we go. SAS Epinal nil, Paris FC 1. I think we do need to discuss something Pacific. I'm pretty damn happy. Well done, lads. Good win. Um, Stats-wise, very, very solid. Hopefully Traore is not too badly injured, otherwise that could cause us all kinds of issues going forward. And a away win on the opening day of the season is, is ideal for us. And Red Star drew, which is also ideal. Um, Le Poire sur la vie... Sorry, apologies as well if I'm murdering any of the pronunciations of the teams. Once again, I always love um, tips on that kind of thing, because some of them are going to be a little bit difficult. There's a few that are obviously fairly obvious, but there's a few that are going to take uh, a little bit of uh, tongue-twisting to actually get them out of my mush. Right, so that's a decent result. Like, I know they're a poor side, but hopefully, you know, another week, another week in training, the tactic will get a little bit more solid. And I don't know who we've actually got up next. Let me just take a quick gander. Who have we got? We've got... Uh, Colomiers, who are struggling down at the bottom but only after one match. So, And we're at home, so if we can win back-to-back -back matches to start this off, that'll be pretty damn solid. And hopefully, once this tactic gets a little bit more fluid, we'll have a little bit more um, of a chance. But I genuinely do think that that narrow midfield with that sort of obelisk, which is what I've called it, um, style could work. So a massive th um, shout out to Funk Star Game for the little for the suggestion on that because you pretty much saved my ass on that one, I have to say. Um, it's something a little bit different. I really do think so. And let's just quickly check on Tra Traore, actually. Um, oh, come on! First game of the season and he's out for five weeks. Lovely old job. Um, so yeah, I'm going to, in the next episode, basically be spending the entire time looking for players because, let's face it, we're going to need them. Um, we're going to need lots and lots of backups hopefully some decent ones but it's going to be really difficult because we don't really have much in terms of scouting at the moment either at one point it said it was too expensive to scout a player that was already in the country so i was a little bit confused as to how that works um so yeah there we go guys um let's see what we're going to do for our next episode um so as you can see you go in at the fifth we're going in at the fifth round of the coupe de france um and that's in october so there's four rounds before that i think there might even be preliminary rounds i really don't know let's just quickly have a gander actually um where are we with the okay <laughs> fair enough so whoa did anyone see that 13 injuries for Clermont foot that's insane anyway yeah so i'm just trying to think what game we should do i'll tell you what we'll do uh next match we'll do at home against dunkirk just because i like saying it. it's quite a satisfying one and they've got a dolphin on the uh, logo of the team so that's that's always a good sign um hopefully by then we'll have picked up a couple of wins but i well i say a couple of wins a couple more wins to add to this but we've Last couple of games, what I would say is that we've looked a lot more solid at the back. Uh, we've actually only conceded goals in that one match against Clairefontaine where I massively changed the uh, tactic midway through the game and it did not work out, let's put it that way. That was when I originally put the Christmas tree in and I actually put uh, the two wide midfielders up as attacking midfielders without changing anything else. Yeah, they were able to score twice against us in like five minutes and I was like, mm, maybe we'll just go back to what we're doing before. So... If you guys are like what you've seen, I'm sorry this episode's a little bit shorter than usual, but then again, I am trying to keep them under 20 minutes, ideally, um, just for the ease of you watching them. Besides, you're getting two today anyway, so I wouldn't fuss about it. So, um, if you guys are like what you've seen, please do drop a like on the video, and if you've liked it even more than that, please subscribe to my channel for more Outcaster icons and From the Shadows in your inbox every single day at 5.30 and 8 o'clock. And I will see you guys in the next episode for the home match against Dunkirk. Hopefully by then we'll be right up there in the league, but I really don't know what's going to happen. We've got some quite tough away games to come, particularly against Bastia. That's going to be a Bastia of a game. I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.